have we any people still optimistic in the chat? Are there any people that still think FSG have this in hand? Because I'm not one of those people. I really am. not I've got every faith in Klopp. But what the hell is going on? What What's going on? Like, let's be frank about this. It's nonsense. It's pathetic. And here we are, 2nd of August. Still, two signings. We've got rid of, we've got rid of four times more players than we've signed. And this is the rebuild. Make it make sense. I'm stressed. I can't lie to you. You know, how many times do we have to penny pinch around the Lavia deal? As an example. So we are going to go in with a third bid. Um, but your guess is as good as mine as to what that third bid will be. Will it be £40 million and a packet of crunchies and, I don't know, a, a washed out Johnny? I don't know. But... We know it isn't going to be what Southampton want. Now, Sasha Tavalieri has said that this is going to be Liverpool's final go at it, final bid. Let's hope it's a somewhat respectable one because the last one was a bit of a joke. And it's getting to the point now where we just don't have... We just don't have time. It's, it's so frustrating. It is so frustrating because we're supposed to be all hands to the pump. We're supposed to be leaving no stone unturned. And I know I sound like a broken record. But it's pathetic. Like, how are we in this position as a club? I'm trying to find out the number of this third Lavia bid. I have a few messages in trying to figure out um, the number, but I don't know it at the moment. But there is, I can confirm the third bid. That much I can agree with Sashi Tavalieri. I just don't have a number. Now, he said, and I think some of this was lost in translation a little bit, so I'm going to read it out to you. He said, Liverpool FC ready to make a third and ultimate offer for Romeo Lavia. I think what he means by that is final offer. I understand the bid will meet the £40 million transfer fee expectations by Saints plus add-ons. Again, my interpretation of that is that the guaranteed money, the upfront money, will be at least £40 million with some add-ons on top of that. Uh, player side are just waiting for Liverpool to activate but inform the club of his desire to join Liverpool, like I've told you all along. He wants Liverpool Football Club. He's let Southampton know that. Um, let's just continue on with this. There's a feeling that Klopp's team are the only squad able to do such an offer at the moment, i.e. other clubs have basically other targets tied up. Dialogue remains open as Southampton won't let their biggest sale of the year uh, and the financial impact of it with relegation fall away, basically. He says deal is still on. So hopefully this gets sorted very, very quickly because we've embarrassed ourselves enough in this transfer window. Go in, offer the 40 million and offer the add-ons that whatever they are, three, four, five million, I don't know. But get it done for the love of God. Because even at signing him, even at bringing in Romeo Lavia, we still have a lot of work to do in this window. We're going to be going into the opening game of the season. And even if Lavia was signed today, I don't see him being ready to play in the opening game against Chelsea. I don't think I don't think he'll be up to speed with the squad. So fully expect somebody like a Jones or somebody else to end up playing that position, which is pathetic. We shouldn't be in this position. Once we knew that Henderson and Fabinho were on the way out, this should have moved very quickly. And the fact that it hasn't is an indictment of a recruitment, unfortunately. Uh, Loan Southampton a player in cash, said Connor Mullen. I guess they'd have to want the player. Um, and off the top of my head, I don't have a number or, you know, somebody who could go down there and... Um, and maybe Tyler Morton, perhaps. The end of the window is going to be crazy. Yeah, but it's pathetic. From our point of view, Noah, look, other clubs who have more established squads and might need a player or two, yeah, you can maybe play with a transfer of chicken, you can wait till the end of the window and see who blinks first. But we don't have that luxury because we are rebuilding an entire area of the pitch right now. And we've got two players in, and thankfully they've had a good pre-season. But whoever we bring in now, the other midfielder or two midfielders, we're still going to be a bit short. And we're certainly going to be short in the opening day. Uh, Lavia should be half of 50 million. So, Ryan, I don't disagree that the prices and the numbers being mentioned are, are overpaying. It is. But what's the option here, Ryan? Liverpool either want the kid and go from, or they have to go elsewhere. And we've left it very late if we're going to do the going elsewhere part. And also, who would that be? Now, there's been a few little whispers that Real Madrid are willing to sell many if they have to, to get Kylian Mbappe. But, you know, that's a leap of faith for us to believe that Liverpool's owners are going to spend what is believed to be 80 million that Real would want. 
Uh, outside of that, Amrabat could be either going to United or staying at Fiorentina, and he wouldn't be good enough to come in as the sole number six. Um, Tyler Adams looks like somebody's trying to trigger his £25 million release clause, but either way, he on his own wouldn't be good enough. And if we look at the Andre situation, well, it's either pay a lot of money to get him now, £40 million, I think, in euros, or pay £20 million and loan him back to January. So either way, that's not going to solve our problem right now. Because we know our owners. There's no way they're paying a premium to get them now. There's no way they're paying 40 when they know the cheap fucks can have them for 20 in January. So I just don't see that happening either. What are your thoughts on the Andre links? He looks good, said CMG. Thank you for the super chat. Look, no problem with him. You know, get him. If he's somebody the club think are good enough, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I've scouted him extensively. I haven't. Ultimately, I want who Klopp wants. And if Andre's one of the names on Klopp's list, then get him. Now, I do have a little bit of something on Gabri Viega because there's still more conversations that Liverpool could potentially go to buy this kid and loan him back to Celta Vigo. I mentioned to you guys, I think it was yesterday or the day before, that Liverpool had sent a representative over to speak with Rafa Benitez about the young man. Now, he wants to play. That's important for any move for Gabri Viega. And nobody can offer him that in the Premier League, really. Nobody in the top six could offer him a guarantee of football. So... According to this report, and I don't know how true this is, Liverpool are weighing up the opportunity to buy him and loan him back for the season. Again, it doesn't help us right now, and we need help right now. And also, he's the wrong type of position that we need, so I'm confused. How long will it take to get a player up to speed if they come in the last week of the window, said Lance? We can't wait on Real Madrid any longer. I guess the answer to that question, Lance, is that it depends on the player. And it depends on what shape they come in in. And it depends on what system they're coming from. So with Romeo Lavia, I mean, you would say we could probably get him up to speed a little bit quicker than somebody coming from a foreign league, as an example. So, but even at that, I don't think any of us would feel really comfortable going into that Chelsea game and dropping Lavia straight in there without any, without any experience for us. Now, if you got him in quickly, could he do something in the game on Monday against Darmstadt? I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Uh, Kieran Mullen, thank you. How many more signings do you think we need to bring in? So it's a great question. And it's a question, Kieran. I will happily answer, my friend. But I'd like to put it to the chat as well. So how many players do I think we need to sign? Three more for me, Kieran. Two midfielders and a centre-back. And I think that that's me being reasonable, by the way. You could make a valid argument for two midfielders, a centre-back and a right-back. You could make a valid argument for two midfielders and two centre-backs. And I would think you've got a point. So me, three more minimum, two of them in midfield and one in defence. Look, let's be frank about this. Joel Matip is, is not good enough anymore. Joe Gomez, I have a soft spot for Joe to some extent because I know he's been through a lot. I know he's worked very hard. But ultimately, I don't feel comfortable if something happened to Ibrahim Kanade that Joe Gomez would come in alongside Virgil van Dijk and be the centre-back pairing. I don't feel comfortable with that. And nothing that I've seen in this pre-season makes me feel that way. Now, I feel a little bit more comfortable at Joe Gomez maybe covering at right-back. Maybe that's just me. We're just sitting on our hands. And th there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no common sense as to why this has taken so long. It's pathetic. I know I keep using that word, but it is pathetic. So I'm going to sit here and I'm going to rant and I'm going to moan and I'm going to do all the things that I normally do when I'm talking about the owners and their transfer business. But here's a, a fair question. Is there anybody in the chat who can give me a valid reason why this transfer business has dragged on as long as it has? Sincere question. I'm not trying to be a smart ass. The two we got done, brilliant. We need to get them in. But everybody knew what was happening. I told you guys a month ago that Fabinho was going to be of interest to Saudi and an offer was coming in. The Henderson stuff, look, that came up and it happened. But we knew very quickly that Hendo wanted out as well. So the club have had a lot of time to act on the situation as it presented itself. And let's not forget, 18 months beforehand, eyeing up central midfielders and who we need to bring in. So I don't, it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't, other than saying that something's happened, that Schmarke ain't up to it, or the budget is a lie, or I don't know, something that we don't know about, but I'm really worried. Thick of FSG, said Craig Gloke. 
Klopp needs players. We can't go into the season with 10 out and two in. And you're absolutely spot on. It's an absolute joke. White Hammer. We are an absolute mess. No money. Trent can't defend, so just let him not bother defending. Nunes is so inferior to Gakpo, but costs a fortune. Not a week ago, there was people ripping me apart for my criticism of Trent last year. There was people in the chat laughing at me, telling me how I was absolutely deluded. And I stand by everything I said. Trent was horrendous back then. Look at that game against Real Madrid at Anfield and tell me that he even tried. But... I'm happy to give Trent the opportunity because he looks serious. He's come back, but he is not a number six on his own. We need somebody who's going to break up play, somebody who's going to read the game, somebody who's going to go in there and just get the ball and give it to Trent or get the ball and give it to McAllister. We need that destroyer. We need that athletic, physical specimen of a man. If that's Romeo Lavia, then so be it. Get it done. What we... like. We're once again in a situation where after all this time and after all this preparation and after all the talk about how we couldn't get Jude Bellingham because we needed to keep, you know, our cloth cut accordingly to go out there and really fill these positions. And yeah, here we are. And we've said this many times. Eight out, two in. Eight players left, two players in. And that's the rebuild. That's John W. Henry giving a war chest to Jurgen Klopp to compete with... Arsenal, who are going out there, by the way, to drop 40 million on a keeper to back up their other keeper for a bit of competition. And that's on top of Yuri and Timber, Kai Havertz, um, the, the, the business they did in January as well, uh, Declan Rice coming in, just a mere 105 million there. And we're here talking about a net spend so far of about 40 million quid in the big rebuild, the war chest. Oh, and shock horror, the investment that we've been promised all along that hasn't shown up yet why is that because it'll happen after the window closes of course so fsg can lie to us again and go yeah that investment that's coming that's coming and ooh, when that investment comes you won't believe the money we'll have but the can's being kicked down the road yet again and we're here like fools waiting for transfers to happen so we can dream about liverpool actually competing war chest is more like a matchbox like, look, at like, let's be realistic about it. We brought in very good money for Fabinho. And it should have been a no-brainer to just go and pay Southampton what they wanted. If they wanted 45, pay it. You got 40 million quid for Fabinho, who's not worth 40 million quid. But we got it. We got 12 million quid for Henderson. Now, look, you lose your captain, it has a big impact. But it won't really have that much of an impact for minutes on the pitch because he wasn't going to play that much, probably. So we brought in a shit ton of money and yet again, we're sitting around waiting for something to happen and our manager's coming out and you can see the frustration. I know he's been upbeat, but you can see that he wants players. So who's doing what? What's Schmadke doing? What's the rest of the recruitment team doing? Who have they been looking at and why is it taking so long? These are questions that I think every Liverpool fan deserves an answer to. Why have we got no centre-back in? Why are we not putting in bids for centre-backs? What are we at? What are we at? We need a centre-back. The targets that we've been looking at for the past, what, year? What have you done? Not even a bid, not one, for a centre-back. Oh, we're waiting for Colwell. Okay, well, he's going to stay at Chelsea, so next. No, well, the, we'll get the usual nonsense. The, oh, the one we wanted wasn't available. I mean, for the love of God, Sal Nunes, compare with Mane, he's very bad, overrated. What? That's just not true. Like, if you want, you brought this up, by the way, so Oscar, bear with me. You said compare him with Mane. Okay, first season at Liverpool, Sadio Mane, 14 goals. Darwin Nunes, first season at Liverpool, how many goals? That's right. 14. Sadio didn't work out too badly, did he? I don't remember people telling us Sadio had failed. There's this mad agenda against Darwin Nunes, and I don't get it. I don't get it. So no, we don't sell Darwin. We keep Darwin. We've given him the number nine. We fill him full of confidence, and we send him out to tear up the Premier League. Dreaming of waking up and seeing Shuamani signed. 
said Colin. And so am I. And I was reading a piece earlier on. I think it was El Nacional. Bear, bear with me. Right, I'm going to read this out. So, Arley and Shoe, many asking price. The Reds have been handed a boost. Should they have eyes on Real Madrid star man Arley and Shoe, many? Via El Nacional, Los Blancos face the problem of having to move some squad members on so they can afford to bring in Kylian Mbappe. Uh, they write that even if Shoemeni continues to enter Carlo Ancelotti's plans, he is completely dispensable and the Real Madrid would look to recoup the 80 million odd they paid for him. Test the water! Test the goddamn water! You know Klopp wants Shoemeni. Apparently, our tie-fisted owners are willing to buy him once upon a time. Well, if he's available for the money Real Madrid pretty much paid for him, or even if there's a possibility he's available, make a bid. Try and do something. Try and get this wheel moving. Because we'd all love him. We'd all love him. Every single one of us here, I'm a guessing, would absolutely love to sign Arley and Schumeni. And we know Jurgen Klopp wants him. In fact, Jurgen Klopp wanted him longer than Bellingham, pretty much. Or at least on a par with Bellingham. What's the news on Caicedo, said Zed uh, Clear. So... Look, there's been a couple of mixed reports on Caicedo. So let me take you through them and then we'll try and figure out who's telling Porky's and, and what's true. So starts off with Ben Jacobs. Ben Jacobs earlier on said, Moise Caicedo's camp have been told by Brighton an 80 million plus bid surpassing Chelsea's rejected offer from an unnamed entity or whether the offer is real. However, contrary to some reports, he believes it is at Liverpool. But... Sky Sports have gone with a bit of a different angle. Sky Sports have said that they believe an unnamed Saudi club has put in an offer for Caicedo. Again, a little bit at odds with what Ben Jacobs said, but does tally to an unnamed club making an offer. But Ben Jacobs did say it was a Premier League club, albeit not Liverpool. So then we have Football Insider, who claim Liverpool are the unnamed club and have come forward with the bid as Chelsea face competition for the player. I don't believe for one second that Liverpool's owners are going to pony up 80 or 100 million quid for Caicedo. I don't see it happening. Um, but again, I'm just taking you through it as we got the information today. And um, yeah, then Sky Sports, as I said, were the last ones to come in. So that's where we're at at the minute. It's, it's not rocket science. It's happened us twice. We've got away with it once. We haven't got away with it another time. And yet we haven't learned a lesson. We haven't gone out there and said to ourselves, no way we're letting this happen again. No way we're leaving until the last minute. We need Jurgen Klopp to have these boys back in in pre-season, early and ready to go, to give us the best chance to try and steal a march in Manchester City, Arsenal and everybody else when the season starts. But no, not our owners. Once again, we're sitting here 2nd of August wondering, are we going to get the bare minimum? And then we're expected to be grateful for it. And if we're not grateful for it, well, top reds and a few other people tell us we're all spoiled or wolves or idiots or ungrateful or we don't know what we're talking about. Thing is, though, we kind of do and we've been proved right on many occasions. So start acting like you actually give a damn about the club. Start calling this stuff out on social media and maybe, just maybe, the negative PR will force the tight gits into doing something. We went and won the Premier League. We won the Champions League. And what's common sense when you win and you're on top? What do you do? You strengthen from a position of strength. You let the world know that you won a league title, you won a Champions League, and that's not enough. You want more. You want to build a dynasty. You want to strike fear into opposition. You want Pep Guardiola and you want Mikel Arteta and you want Eric Ten Hag shitting themselves at the idea of what Liverpool will do next. What did we do? Seth Vandenberg, Adrian, or somebody else unimportant, and I think one more signing, something pretty pathetic. Maybe it wasn't Adrian. It was Seth Vandenberg and some other non-plus signing. And here's the kicker. When we win stuff and we hear about all the TV money and the prize money and the sponsorship money, the next words out of those fucking spoofers' mouths are, wages, lads. We haven't got a pot to piss in because we have a high wage bill. But Manchester City just won loads of stuff and they're out there spending money on Guardiola and all. Why do they have money? Mm. Didn't get in the Champions League, lads. No money. But what about the years we were in the Champions League? Where was the money then? Uh, wages. Okay, Arsenal are back in the Champions League for one season and they've already spent over 200 million. For one season? They're not even in it yet. Like, they think my biggest pet peeve 
with how we're treated as football fans, and this applies to every fan base, is we're spoken to like we're idiots. We're spoken down to like with a bad child who's told to go sit in the corner, the grown-ups are talking, and you don't understand what's going on. We are constantly treated like fools. Nobody was excited for Lavia when the news first broke. Now due to FSG, Lavia feels like a luxury. That is a very good comment, Devesh. Very good comment. Um, and you're right. I've said this before. As a Liverpool fan, sometimes it feels like we've got PTSD or in an abusive relationship where we somehow start to feel grateful to our abusers. Now, I know that's a bit of a strange link to make, but I feel like at times we, we don't respond to things rationally as fans should. We're like, oh, we're getting something. Isn't that better than nothing? No, it's not good enough. Do you blame Jurgen Klopp? Well, he's part of the failure. I'm on, yes. Yes. Like, I can't sit here with a clear conscience and say that Jurgen Klopp telling us that we were like kids who wanted a Ferrari at Christmas or that his insistence on us not needing a midfielder didn't cause some of this problem. I can't do that because it was nonsense. He was wrong. He admitted he was wrong at the end. We ended up with Arthur Mello. That's no good to anyone. So I don't remove Klopp of any blame. He certainly is part of it because we want him to speak up more. But he seems to be happy to toe the company line at times with the owners. And, you know, it's up to each of us how we feel about that, I guess. But, yeah, Klopp isn't above reproach. My problem with us potentially signing Caicedo, because he's a great player, but you know he's going to twerk as soon as somebody else comes in for him. Like, I would have no surprise whatsoever if we had Caicedo at Liverpool and in a year's time a Saudi club's come in and offer him shit money, like mad money, and he just goes, yep, yeah, Mm -hmm. Bye-bye, Liverpool. I'm twerking my way over to Saudi. Because he does it for everyone. He did it for Chelsea. He did it for Arsenal. I'm sure he'd do it for Real Madrid if he was at Liverpool and Madrid decided they want them. So I would never trust that Caicedo has really bought into the project. That's my problem with Liverpool signing Caicedo. I'd always worry that he's one offer away from kicking up a fuss and wanting to get out. You reckon we get Lavi by the end of the week? I reckon if the offer really is 40 million, plus, let's say, five in add-ons. That gets it done, in my opinion. But I don't know the exact amount of the offer, so until, we, I guess, we get a confirmation on, on what that offer entails, I think that will get it done with Southampton, I do. Because they're going to get more than they may have gotten next summer if Manchester City came back in and triggered that buyback clause. Now, interestingly, Manchester City have a 20% sell-on clause on Lavia, so I guess Southampton would have to take that into account as well. Who do you think would play as a six against Chelsea? Maybe Thiago? I mean, it's hard to know because the lads have been at Kirby. They've had no preseason games, Thiago or by Cecic. You know, if they were to get some game time against Darmstadt, would that be enough to convince Klopp that, Klopp that they're ready to go? I don't know. I know I don't want to see Curtis Jones playing in the six and not because of anything wrong with Curtis Jones. It's just that's not his position. Look, friends, I feel like we're going around in circles. So I'm going to say goodnight. And I'm going to record a video now on the Shoe Many stuff and a few other bits and pieces that will be going straight up on the channel. So if you've joined us late or you haven't got to catch up on everything, don't worry. I'll be covering it over the next 15, 20 minutes. And that should be up before 10 o'clock. Other than that, I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, half past eight. For uh, It'll be the last bit of live content we do actually till Sunday because... Friday, we've got the live show in Dublin. And on Saturday, we're going out for dinner um, with some of the people who've travelled over for the live show. So no live content. Tomorrow will be the last one until Sunday. But we will have videos ready for the weekend and stuff like that as well. So, look, thank you so much, everyone who joined us tonight. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so. You can still get your tips of this stream. But most importantly, Thank you for joining me tonight. Thank you for giving up your time and I hope you're all well. Much love and I will catch you tomorrow.